Knights of Sidonia Episode 1 Commencement. Now, this is my first impressions review for Knights of Sidonia. I will be doing this review, and then I'll be doing one for the very end of this first season. And I'll do the same thing for Season 2 as well. But this was a great first episode. I swear it was like every seven minutes, something <laughs> random and new was happening. Because it starts off kind of simple. It's like, okay, we have a character who's in, you know, his robot. He's in his mech. He's fighting against the creature. He destroys it. It pierces, like, through the heart. Cool little particle effect, and it, like, kind of floats outward and stuff. And it's like, okay, turns out that was just a simulation. Get our opening, then we find out that he's, you know, he's moving this sign out of the way. And at that point, I was like, okay, he moves this sign all the time. He's told by someone older than him, hey, don't go beyond this point because it's dangerous. It's like, whatever, I'm getting some food right now because I can't wait. And as the episode goes on, I realized, no, he got food because he literally had no more food left. He probably does do it several times, but... I felt like, you know, kind of the way they did it after things continued on, that truly was the first time he'd actually left. So then things get even weirder because he goes through, he falls into the thing with the rice. Both, like, two of his fingers just bend all the way backwards. He didn't seem truly phased, so that's when something, like, instantly kicked in. Like, all right, that's weird. He didn't seem too upset. I know he had to run, but it was like, oh, it was kind of like an old oh, crap thing. That sucks. And he just kept going. And then he hits his head on, like, the tram. As he's on the tram, like, he hits a box and he does a flip and everything. And I was like, that should have killed him. Like, as soon as I saw it, I was like, he should be, like, dead. So, and then they even referenced that, like, right after where, like, the random uh, girls are talking. I was like, you know, he survived that. And I was like, yeah, he did. That's really odd. So, you know, that was, like, the first thing. I was like, something's going on here. Like, something's a little weird. He's living underground. They're living above ground. I thought there were, like, two society sort of things. And then that was not the case after, like you know, a couple of minutes where, you know, he ends up being in, like, the hospital. So then we get introduced to some other characters, and that's when another random thing happens where we have the girls' locker room, and there's, like, three girls, which in a later scene, there's, like, almost a dozen of the same girl, and I'm like, I can't tell if they're all sisters or if they're clones or what the F is going on, so I'm waiting for some answers for that. And then they have the um, girl who is both genders, and I was like, okay, well, that's interesting, like, where does that come from? Because it all seems scientific just from that point, and then things continue, you know, to get crazier and crazier. And they reference the fact that the guy who wrote on the sign that the main character moved, I was like, okay, that's like the father figure or whatever, who he's disobeying. Apparently, that guy's been dead, and they show the body. He's been dead for a super long time, and that's when I was like, so are these people immortal, or what's going on? Like he, he's able to survive. He has to survive off of food, so that's clear. But if he has enough food, do they, like, live forever or at least, like, a super, super long amount of time? Because there are a couple of things that happen, like him breaking his finger backwards and him healing up really, really well, um, like, after jumping through a window or being able to jump through a window with no thoughts whatsoever. He's like, you're not taking me? Boom, I jumped through a window. No big deal. And he just starts running. And this is after he's been knocked out, after he's broken fingers, and it's nothing to him. So I'm like, clearly something's going on with this guy. Like, I, he may not be immortal. But there's something going on with him, and that's, you know, there's that mystery there. So, you know, they have that with the characters, the potential clone girls, the girl who is both genders, and she can uh, basically reproduce with whoever she wants. Then we have basically, like, the the mad guy who's like, I'm supposed to be on top, and yada, yada, yada. Um, I, I don't really care about him at all. At, at this point, I'm sure he'll be important, but at this point, it's like, he's kind of top tier, but he's the douchebag character, so it's like, oh, we gotta hate him, and eventually they'll bond. It's anime. But, you know, we get to meet some of the other characters. It was really hard for me. Like, I suck in general with names, but now it's, like, with this, it might just be impossible because it's going to take me a minute to even tell who he's talking to because, like, I can hear the differences in the voices. But when I first see the characters, I'm like, all right, the girl with, like, the dark hair, there's a girl that looks almost exactly like her. The girl who is both genders, there's another girl that I'm pretty sure doesn't look that much like her, but when I was watching this first episode, I was like, I can't tell if that's the same girl because they already did the you know, the girls with the pink hair, they do have different names. So I was like, they already did that where they have characters that look exactly the same. So I'm like, I'm pretty sure they do too. And it's just confusing going through the whole episode. Like, I think they look exactly the same, but they're never in the same scene together where I can look at the character models and tell if there's any difference. So that was confusing, like, the whole episode. But they keep going through. Um, he can't use, like, the newest version of the machines, of, of their mechs, which was only one... Uh, one step up, like he was using like 17 and they were using 18 or whatever the actual numbers were. So I was like, all right, he's been underground for quite some time, but at the same time, they haven't advanced that far beyond what he's used to. Because I thought it was going to be like, that's the super, super old version 
and they can talk about the fact that it was a war and stuff so maybe all of these people live for a really long time because they made it seem like that machine was you there you know it's like a great war or whatever so it's like that seems like it was a super long time ago and i just assumed um that they were you know have like three or four levels beyond what he was used to and it was like oh this is the 18 i'm used to the 17 i was like okay well that's weird so maybe everyone lives for a long time or something it, like it's just really really hard to tell like so however they're doing with this society it's really weird but it was just interesting the whole way through and then they finally go out on their first mission and he flies through the um like the tunnel and everything in his ship and it's like poof they're not even on earth they're actually in space they have like artificial suns and like artificial underground and all that stuff and they're just like in a giant tube asteroid in space and i was like there's another random thing to watch you know from this show so whole episode i was enjoying the fact that like every couple of minutes some random thing was freaking happening um the voice acting was very interesting because um this was the first anime that netflix really did but this like the third or fourth one that i've watched like i'm catching up on like all the anime i've been kind of holding off forever but the first one i actually watched through was um Ajin. And a lot of the actors are in here, like the main voice actor, or the voice actor for the main character in this, I'm pretty sure is the exact same guy um, from Ajin, so it was just very interesting. And then the guy who's like the douchebag character in this, I'm pretty sure is the exact same voice actor who's like the douchebag character in Ajin. So it made me laugh, where I was like, the characters, uh, the voice actors are doing the same types of characters in the different series, and it just really made me laugh, I was like, this is the main character doing the same, the main character. And then this guy is doing the douchebag character again. Uh, where technically this was the first time they did it and Ajin was the second time. And then there's the old guy who was, uh, well he was actually like the villain in Ajin. I forgot what role he played in this. But it was just funny hearing the voice and I'm like, they're almost playing the exact same roles. Like some of, you know, at least for the douchebag character, the personality is even the same. But it was a really good first episode. I was mad that it ended on like the cliffhanger battle thing because it was like he's finally in battle and he's not prepared. He sees this girl get hit and it's like, holy crap, because he could destroy this thing because he's great at it. And I was like, okay, you know, of course they have him test the new machine. And I guess they figured, you know, with him being underground, they knew how old he was and they knew that he'd be better. And that's why there's not even a scene explaining why they took this machine from like a war to give to this character they just knew like all right this character is really old they have you know the higher ups who they do reference the fact that these characters may or may not be immortal so it's like maybe they lived underground and maybe that's the whole thing where it's like they know exactly how old he is and exactly where he comes from so there's still that mystery there like are they truly immortal do people just live a super long time who knows like it's really hard to tell but i like that sort of mystery and then like i said the way that it ends was good where he's getting into his first battle we saw how good he was with the machine in the beginning of the episode where he gets the top score again and he's in that same sort of experience except he sees someone else get hurt gets hurt and it's like well i don't see that in the simulation like that distracts me seeing this woman you know that i'm teamed up with we're just holding this little like laser thing steady to cut through you know the ground and a monster comes out of there and destroys her thing she like gets completely knocked out and he's like holy crap and then he gets hit because he's too distracted because it's not just i'm here and then there's the monster and i kill it in simulation over so i'm excited to see where things go for this next episode i kind of wish that it was an hour-long episode but i was like you know it, it was a good way to end in the first episode for sure because that everything i loved was without any sense of action aside from the fact that he jumped through the window and the one dude punched him so hard as <laughs> he was running past him, he knocked him out in one hit. But I was like, that's really good. Like every couple of minutes, it's just like, all right, well, what's the explanation for that? It's like this, you know, really big sense of a futuristic world, which I thought was Earth at first. And now it's like, you know, it's not even world in the physical sense of a planet. It's world just like in the essence of this is where they live. So I really like this first episode. It has me excited to get through uh, the rest of this season. Um, looking forward to pretty much all the answers. I'm sure there'll be, you know, an exposition here and there. I actually, um, as I was looking some stuff up about this, I heard that this is why we have Blame. Because I never knew that the guy who created Blame was the same uh, manga who created Knights of Sidonia, like the original manga. So that's awesome because Blame is amazing. If you haven't seen that movie yet that's on Netflix, I haven't watched it yet, but I read that manga years ago. That was like one of the first manga that I ever read all the way through. It was either the very first one 
or it was the second manga that I've read like all the way through and it's great it's almost like a picture book because the main character barely says anything in blame so if you want like a simple manga read if you wanted to go through the manga you can obviously just watch the Netflix film at this point but it was a very interesting story it's the same sort of thing too where it's like this crazy futuristic deal and it's just like I don't know what's happening and you just it kind of builds up this big mystery and it's just explained you know piece by piece not a ton of exposition because the main character legitimately doesn't talk that much like the manga is just like here's a cool panel of art and here's another cool panel of art like you go through a whole chapter um and you won't have like that you'll have maybe like at least for the main character you probably have like eight total lines and like it's other characters that actually talk so definitely check out Blame if you haven't I can't wait to actually watch that movie because I never saw the anime I only read the manga so I'm excited to watch this movie and see how they actually uh, pull it off but just wanted to reference that if you like Knights of Sidonia um, Blame is totally different. It's much more violent, um, but, well, actually, I guess I can't say that I've only watched the first episode, but I'm going to assume, based off what I know from Blame, Blame, um, it's insanely violent. It gets really crazy, so check it out if you're interested. I, I personally think it'll be good from what I remember from reading the manga, so if you're interested in this, you might be interested in that same creator and everything, but like I said, for this show... Definitely a great first episode, excited to get some answers, excited to get some action going into the second episode as well. But of course, I would love to know what you guys thought about this episode, so please comment below. Let me know your favorite parts about it, your least favorite parts about it. Of course, with me being super far behind on this, I would love to know um, what you guys just thought of this first episode. Like, if you can remember back to when you first saw this, you know, what did you think of it? Like, what did you think of this first episode, and what were you hoping to see if you didn't, you know, read the manga beforehand like me? just not knowing anything, jumping right into it. How did you guys feel about the first episode and what were you looking forward to seeing? Because I know I'm very excited to get answers more than anything else. Like, what's the deal with these people? Uh, like, is this High Council truly immortal? What does that mean for the other people? Are the richer people living longer than the poorer people? Because you have, like I said, the girls with the pink hair. There's like a bunch of them and I'm like, I can't, I'm assuming they're not just clones, but I don't know. Like, you know, the there are no answers in this. It's just like, this is just the world. And it, they're introduced and it's like, these girls look the same. And then this girl is both genders. Or technically, she's not a girl or a boy. Um, but it, it's just very interesting. So I was like, I don't really know any answers. But that's kind of what has me excited the most. But like I said, let me know what you guys thought about this very first episode. So please put your comments down in the comment section below. And of course, thanks for watching.